So a least squared regression line is a line that describes um, uh, or shows how a response variable um, changes or is affected as um, an explanatory variable also changes. That is, as in most cases, you know, kind of going old school, as x changes, how does y change? All right, and so my input value is x and my output value is y. And because we're talking about random variables that we're selecting as we go along, um, when I'm getting a, a, an actual data point y, I'm going to have a point like x, y. All right, but when I have a line, the line for a regression line and uh, is, is going to be known with a y hat because it's going to be my prediction. So the actual data point here is x comma y, and I use actual data points to find the line, but then the line itself is based off uh, of all of those data points together and becomes my prediction line. All right, so that's a least squared regression line. All right, and then we're going to use it to predict values. Um, so let's say this is my smallest x point, y point, and this is my largest one up here. Um, when I do predicting, um, I am best served, that is, it's in my best interest to only make predictions within that range of values. So as the line extends out, even though the line goes on forever, um, it is best, best if I stay somewhere um, within this range of values. All right, and that's called interpolation. That's a no. Interpolation, which basically means making a prediction within or inter within the boundaries. All right. If I go and I make a prediction outside of the boundaries to you know to the low side or high light, high side, that's called extrapolation. And extrapolation, every time you hear the word, you just I want you to start thinking is bad. Someone says extrapolation, you say, oh, that's bad. Extrapolation is bad, and we'll talk about why later. So my least squared regression line will look something like this, kind of like going old school when you're thinking a, a, or excuse me, y equals mx plus b, but we use slightly different letters here in statistics. y hat equals a plus bx. Anytime you're talking about a regression line, you absolutely have to have y hat. If you just write y, you'll actually lose points if you're talking about a regression line because um, it's only y equals if we know every data point x and y, and we know exactly what the line is, not just a collection of data. All right, so based because this is based off of a sample, it's um, not as accurate as the entire population, which we'll never have, which is why we use y hat. A is the y-intercept, b is the slope. So, uh, you know, b, slope, really is, you know, as x increases by 1, the y hat value will um, increase or decrease, uh, depending on what b is. If b is positive, it increases. If b is negative, it decreases. Um, so the y hat value will increase or decrease um, by b. You know, So if, if b is 2, so for every 1 that x goes up, the y hat goes up by 2. Um, if, if B is negative 0.7, then for every one value that X goes up, the Y hat value goes down by negative 0.7. Of course, every time I do a problem, I'm never going to talk about it that generic and that general. Always have to have context. So let's take a look at a problem where we're looking at data um, from Old Faithful, the geyser um, over in Yellowstone. So um, the, the duration of an um, uh, eruption and how that compares to the interval time before the next uh, eruption of it, Old Faithful happens. Um, so for example, if I have a data point of like 216,79, uh, that means that the eruption lasted for 216 seconds, and then there were 79 minutes until the next eruption. So this is seconds, this is minutes. And what I did is I went online, I found some data from this, um, and I put it into some lists and then graphed it. So let's take a look uh, just real briefly at my data. So what I did is I, you know, just showing you, yes, indeed, I really did have some data here. 
this was my duration list, and that was my interval list. Um, how long between, before the next eruption, so that's how long it was, and that's how long it was before the next eruption. And then I did a plot, and I did a scatter plot with my list 6 and my interval list that I entered. And I made it a plus instead of a donut, just because I'm feeling fat lately and didn't want to have another donut. Alright, and then here's the graph. I did zoom 9, and that particular point is 200, 74. So um, I would need to um, label my axes. This would be interval and my x-axis is duration. Anytime I do a graph, you have to have those key items. You gotta have titles on the graphs, so you have to have data points labeled, um, and something on here indicating what the points are. So what I do is I actually just take one data point and label it and say that's 200 comma 74, so you got a sense for where the x's are, a sense for the y's are. It wouldn't be a bad idea to put one more plot point down with its, you know, you know, if I knew what the coordinates were of that particular point, I could put that down. Um, so that way it gives scale as well. All right, so then what I want to do after that is I want to describe the graph. And so I say, oh, looking at this graph, I'm going to get rid of these other things here. Get rid of this stuff. Let's move that up. Um, so this graph is a, I would say, um, somewhat strong positive linear relationship. Now here's the key. Which means this is a phrase you need to be using all of the time. Alright, because so I gotta say what that means, and this is where I pull in the context, which means as duration increases, so the duration of the eruption, as duration increases, the interval between eruptions also increases. Okay, then I'm going to do so. That's my graphical graphing graphical interpretation. And now we're going to go to new. So I'm going to find the least squared regression line. So I'm going to do stat calc and what number is that one? Stat calc number I think it's 8 on the graphing calculator which is linreg a plus bx and I'm gonna do that for my two lists so sorry that's pretty sloppy L L6 comma my interval list and I will get then this. Um, a is equal to 32.33 B is equal to 0.195 um, and my R squared which I'll come back to later is 0.87 and my R is 0.93 actually 4. Round it up. So I have my equation then, which I'll write as y hat, because I have to have y hat, 32.33 plus 0.195x. And then I need to interpret, so I will say um, for every increase in, uh, so x again is duration, so for every increase of, and my units are seconds, one second for eruption time will increase the time I'm running out of room for the next eruption so that's the interval time so the increase the, increases the amount of time for the next eruption or the interval time uh, by 0.195 minutes. Remember, because eruption time, or excuse me, interval time is y hat, eruption time is x, and that's in seconds. So for every increase of one second for eruption, x, will increase the next eruption interval, y hat, by 0.195 minutes. And then for the y intercept, I would say if the eruption time is zero seconds, so let's say it goes and then ends right away. Like there is no eruption time at all. 
the next eruption will happen in about 32.33 seconds. And I would write that down too, and that's interpreting these values in context. Then I gotta take those two R values. R squared is 0 0.87, then 0 0.934. 0.934 is R, which means M E A N S that there is a strong. I say strong because this number is close to one. 0.934 is pretty strong. Strong positive because again, this number is positive. Uh, linear, because that's the only thing R can measure, relationship between duration and interval. So basically R confirms it. R squared is the coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination, um, it, it tells us what percent of kind of basically what we saw happen in the interval times in the in the uh, y values how much of that is linked and attributed back to the um, duration using my equation um, so mine was point what did I say I think it was 0 0.87 we'll just say it was so I can do that um, so this is what I would say 87 percent of the variation variation in predicted uh, intervals, interval times, is attributed to attributed to the variation in duration using this model, using this linear model. Okay, another way to think about it is 13%. 13% of the reasons why the um, interval changes um, is attributed to or linked back to something other than the duration. All right, so it seems like duration has a pretty good um, effect or, or can, seems to be a good indicator. Um, now we're not going to say cause because we can't show cause effect. All right, and then that's, I think, my last big point that I want to make on this video because it's getting kind of long. Um, a linear regression, a linear regression can show association only, but not causation. What do I mean? Just because a graph is like really strong positive linear relationship, that doesn't mean that X causes Y. It just means they're both going at the same rate very consistently together. And maybe they have nothing to do with each other. All right? Maybe they do, but that is going to require further study and more sophisticated statistical techniques that we'll do later in the class. Um, but we cannot show causation, cause effect, just by looking at um, a least squared regression line. All right? Um, I am going to, I think, finish with that. All right. Um, what I want you to do in the question and answer portion is, um, can you think of two variables that might have a negative association? That is, one goes up, the other one goes down, um, where it's definitely not a cause-effect relationship. Um, so take some time and think. Look at some things around you. Think... You know, if this goes up, that other thing goes down, but it's not because X causes Y, it just happens that way. It's a challenging question to think about. So it's not going to be an easy answer. So take some time and think. Take your notes, obviously, on this and fill out the form before you come to class, um, and I'll see you in class.